Hello fellow Eclipse pilots, Marcus Adelson here with a brief hands-on of AVIO IFMS. E5C members David Green, Steve Grant and myself was offered the opportunity to spend some time with the new FMS. And in this video we're going to show you how to enter a flight plan with Airway, Star and Approach. We're going to look at some of the new map features and fly a coupled ILS and a coupled GPS approach. To start entering a flight plan, click on the MFS key on the MFD. You then have the option to either build your flight plan on the Active tab, or you can build it on the Route tab if you plan to fly this flight plan again in the future. Waypoints can be entered using the keyboard or twisted in using the MFD knob. Here we're entering a flight plan from Boca to Teterboro. We're going to select the JK3 arrival flat rock transition. Continue, activate, confirm, and there it is the whole flight plan including the arrival. Let's edit the flight plan and add Savannah as our first waypoint after Boca. As you can see the moving map on the right hand tile has already been updated to reflect the flight plan. And from Savannah we're going to insert J51 with flat rock as the exit, execute the flight plan, and our whole route from Boca, Savannah, J51, down to the JK3 arrival has been created. With IFMS, the moving map has been improved significantly. The flight plane is now proper overlaid, and data layers such as airspace, airways, and runways can be toggled on and off. Topography can now also be disabled for pilots that prefer a cleaner map. Jeppesen charts can be overlaid, which we'll see more of shortly. Time to build a flight plan we're actually going to get to fly. We're going to go from Boca to Palm Beach, runway 10 left, and we're going to shoot the ILS to 10 left. Since this is an ILS approach, GPS guidance is for monitoring only. After acknowledging this message, we choose the vectors to final and get a chance to review our newly completed flight plan. ATC has started vectoring us towards the final approach course. You can here see two of the new moving map features. One is a track feature that shows us where the nose is headed. The other one is the Jefferson chart, neatly overlaid over the moving map and properly oriented. Well, that altitude crossing, what does that affect? That's just what it is on the plate. If you look here on the yeah, plate. Right. Yeah. I mean, but it's not interfacing in any way at the moment. It, there's no interface here because we're just on the, uh, right. we're using it for informational purposes for the ILS. Right. Yeah. It just, instead of having to go to the chart now and look and see what it is, and then you on the cloud, yeah, 1,000 feet, then turn to 2,000. Yeah, 234, turn right in 360, descend to maintain 2,000. Flight 360 down to 2,000, Starfish 234. 360 and then down to 2, out to change. We'll slow it up for the sky. Starfish 234, 6 miles from Zyzer, turn right heading 070, maintain 2000, we'll establish down to localizer, cleared ILS, runway 10 left approach. Alright, 070 and 2000 to establish, we'll clear for the ILS and 10 left uh, for Starfish 234. Now 5.5 outside the, uh, the final approach fix, which is fine. He's giving us the heading. And obviously, we can, at this point, we can, can arm, arm it. it. You can arm exactly. it. Exactly. It's capturing itself now. Yep. And we're four miles outside the final approach fix. I'm going to take the first notch of flaps here. Below 200. They're moving. Cloud, so 
comes alive, right? Flat pat's alive. Flaps indicating landing. And uh, Palm Beach Tower, Starfish 234 with you on the ILS to 1 0 left. Starfish 234, Palm Beach, 1 0 left, clear for the option. 1 0 left, clear for the option, Starfish 234, thank you. A quick talk through the process for the mist. Okay, so for the mist, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the. Down to the mints, obviously, we can go over here and hit mints and hit it twice, 219. And it's selected in mints set. So what we want to do is we're going to look, we're going to climb to 2,000, right? So the initial is 1,000, we're up to 2,000. So what I would do is I would go ahead and set, because we're going down the glide path as it is, go ahead and set 2,000, correct? Right. And the, the procedure is to hit toga, add the power, so it's going to get your pitch command for you. Right. And then it's going to be uh, flaps take off, positive rate, zero will come up, remaining flaps will come up right, after the, you know, after the continuous with positive rate. What we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to go into nav mode, because it's going to capture on the nav, and then it will continue to climb for us and make the turn and go to the hold. Five hundred. Approaching minimums. There's your marker. And here comes the minimums. Minimums. Alright. Go hit the toggle. Here comes the pitch. Bubs are coming to take off. And the best thing to do is come up here and go ahead and hit that pitch wheel down a little bit so you don't get so much over pitch. Positive rate. Gears coming up. Starfish 234 is on the go. Starfish 234. Thank you. And remaining flaps are coming up. And we want to switch it into... Traffic, traffic. Starfish 234, contact departure 25.2. Okay, 25.2, Starfish 234, thank you. Okay. It's going to do a teardrop and come around. That's right. And it just and it paints it up. November 9, November Charlie, contact Palm Beach Approach, 1284. Here it goes. See you on the screen here. See ya. And that is how you fly on ILS and a published miss approach to an Avio IFMS. Next, we're going to exit the hold and fly the GPS-5 approach back to Boca. To briefly approach, we go back to short mode, select Boca as our airport, and then the RNAV-5. Starfish 234, we're uh, three miles outside of launch. We'd like to get, uh, like to leave the hold at launch and get vectors over to its home for the GPS to fly in the Boca. Starfish 234, Budaz request to turn left, heading uh, 270. When you're able, go direct to Zappa. That's the initial approach fix for the RNAV uh, runway 5. So it's in, you Zappa. Uh, Zappa is purple, which means that it's set. That's it. And so we'll go direct to Zappa like you gave us, right? Right. Activate. There's our line. Let's zoom it out here. And, 4, and I am going. Starfish 234, traffic southeast of your Zappa East. And my a couple things I do like is not having to wait and pan. It actually it, it's a, it's a constant movement. You know, that's what's a lot different about the moving map on this one. Is it's a, uh, you know, you don't have to hit it and wait. You, you can go progressively by the miles. You can do it for me all the way. Yeah, it's quick. It's really quick. I want to zero point on it. Now you're showing us a minute out from the plaza. That's correct, and we're 3.2 miles. And you can see it here as well. Starfish 234, you are five miles from Tana. Maintain 1,600 till established. Final approach course cleared RNAV runway 5 approach. Okay, we're clear for the RNAV into 5 for Starfish 234. Thanks, sir. Need that executive. VFR and AC. That's right. So there's two ways you can do it. You go to heading or you can hit nav. Either way. Yeah, because all you got to do is put in a roll right on the side. So you should be able to go here now. Roll and you hit approach. Approach. It says FMS approach. It was fairly gusty while shooting this approach, but the autopilot did a great job tracking the center line. We didn't disconnect the autopilot until the 100 feet AGL. Approaching minimums. We came away impressed with Avio IFMS. 
building and manipulating flight plans is a breeze, the moving map on the MFD is now fully functional, and the autopilot is fully coupled in all approach modes. A few items remain, radio tuning and en route coupled VNAP are high on the wish list, but the integrated cockpit, as originally promised, is finally here. I hope you've enjoyed watching this brief tour of Avio IFMS. Safe flying.